In the previous lecture, I talked about the need to rid ourselves of intuitive thinking imposed by culture and society and to embrace scientific and critical thinking. Today, we will discuss another problematic mode of thinking that arises from the incomplete evolution and development of the brain, egocentrism. The essence of egocentrism is the belief that you are the center of the universe. It is not the same as selfishness, but rather refers to the psychological notion that everything I see and feel should also be seen and felt by others, and that my perspective is the same as everyone else's. In human history, the most classic example of egocentric thinking is the geocentric theory, which posits that the Earth is the center of the universe. In 1597, Galileo wrote a letter to Kepler in which he asked, How should we describe these so-called academic elites who stubbornly cling to classical beliefs and refuse to even look through a telescope at the unknown world beyond? Should we mock them or pity them? Galileo himself was soon persecuted for proposing the heliocentric theory, and another scientist and philosopher who supported it, Bruno, was burned at the stake. We now know that the geocentric theory is wrong and the heliocentric theory is correct, but why did we believe in the former for thousands of years? Apart from religious factors, the real reason is our stubborn mode of thinking, which is egocentric. The extreme manifestation of egocentrism is autism. If you conduct an experiment with a two-year-old child, you will find that when you show them a card with a bird on one side and a truck on the other, and ask them what they see when you show them the bird's side, they will say bird. But when you ask them what you see, they will say bird as well, even though you are looking at the truck side. This phenomenon, if it persists into adulthood, becomes a psychological disorder known as autism. Autistic individuals are trapped in a narrow space where there is only one perspective, their own. They cannot understand the viewpoints and emotions of others, and they believe that what they see and feel is the same as what others see and feel. As a result, they cannot engage in normal social interaction and communication. You may think that you are not autistic and that you can see the world from other people's perspectives and empathize with them. But have you really completely rid yourself of egocentric thinking? Let's do a few experiments. In the first experiment, you bring a friend over and tap out the beat of a song you both know on a table. What are the chances that your friend will guess the song? People tend to think their friends have an over 80% chance of guessing correctly, but the real result is zero. In the second experiment, you wear a t-shirt with a strange color combination and walk around a group of people. How many people do you think will notice your strange attire? People tend to think over 50% of people will notice, but the real result is less than 20%. This phenomenon is called the spotlight effect where we believe that the spotlight is always on us no matter where we are. So you see, what you hear and see may not be the same as what others hear and see. And of course, your thoughts and ideas are also different from others. But often, we naively assume that our viewpoints are the same as others. In another experiment, psychologists divided college students into two groups. One group expected to get married after the age of 30, while the other group believed they would get married before the age of 30. The psychologists asked both groups what they thought other people's attitudes towards marriage were. Those who planned to get married early believed that 70% of people also preferred to get married before the age of 30, while those who expected to get married later believed that 70% of people preferred to get married after the age of 30. So why is it so difficult for us to rid ourselves of egocentrism and truly understand the world from other people's perspectives, even though we are not two-year-old children or autistic individuals? The first reason is related to the evolution of our brains. The center of our thinking is the prefrontal cortex, which is a newly evolved organ. In ancient physiognomy, there is a saying that a full heavenly palace refers to a well-developed prefrontal cortex. Autism often accompanies underdeveloped prefrontal cortex. 
During the evolution from Homo habilis to Homo sapiens over the past two million years, the human brain volume has tripled, and the prefrontal cortex accounts for most of the increase. This newly evolved organ is still immature in many ways, so our thinking is still lacking in flexibility and completeness. Therefore, even as adults, our thinking often carries a childish egocentrism. The second reason is related to the ideas we are exposed to in our daily lives. We have been indoctrinated with the idea that our psychological world is an objective and faithful reflection of the physical world, and even that the psychological world is just a mirror image of the physical world. Therefore, we tend to believe that everyone's psychological world is the same, and that your psychological world is the same as mine. But this view is wrong. Each of us has an independent psychological world, so the psychological world you construct is different from the psychological world constructed by others. Therefore, we must recognize the differences between individuals and cherish the value of every kind of thought.